And now we're ready to start the last function in our ATM program. So this function is also a value returning function and accepts an argument. So the withdraw function will be very similar to the deposit function. So quick review, show menu is a void function, does not return information, does not accept information. Get option is a value returning function, it returns the option that the user enters. It does not accept any information. Print balance is a void function, does not return any information, but it accepts the balance because it needs to know what the current balance is. And that variable is stored in main. Uh, deposit, it accepts the balance, the current balance, and then it prompts the user for deposit amount, adds them together, and returns that. So it's a value returning function, and that returned value is stored in balance. And then withdraw would be the same way. So here's a question for you. What type of function is main? Is it a value returning function, or is it a void function? Well, if you said void, you are correct. And if you said value returning, there's probably a little um, confusion around functions that print information. Some students are confused about functions that print information. They think those are value returning functions because they print stuff out to the screen. Returning a value and printing are two separate ideas. So just because a function prints information does not mean it's a value returning function. You can see in the show menu, we printed several different things, but this is a void function, right? Because it didn't return any information. But when we say this keyword return and we pass it a value, that return will send back that information to the calling function. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out our last function, withdraw. So withdraw will accept the deposit or the balance amount. And let's go balance. Let's go look at our sample run. So the withdraw amount, we have to account for negative amounts, right? Those wouldn't be valid. And we don't want the user to be able to take out more money than they have. So we have to check to make sure that their amount is less than what they have in their account or we'll give them an insufficient funds uh, message. So what I need to do is create, um, create a variable uh, withdraw and that's going to be a float type. Right, so I'll prompt the user for withdraw and store into variable withdraw. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the while true again because I wanna keep looping until they give me a valid amount. So while true, and what makes the amount valid or invalid, right? Well, if the um, withdraw is greater than the balance, that's a problem. So I'm going to, that's a four, five. I'm going to print a message, um, uh, print uh, insufficient funds, okay? Uh, six. Else, if withdraw is less than uh, zero, I'm going to print um, invalid amount. Okay. Um, through eight. Else, it's a valid amount and I'm just going to break. If I don't break out of the loop, I need to prompt and ask, ask them again, which is a little different than I did up here, right? I prompted and asked them again in the if, but this time I have two ifs and I don't want to prompt them here and then prompt them here. That's not efficient. So what I'll do is I can just prompt for the withdraw uh, right after, um, while I'm still in the loop, if I haven't broken out of the loop, 
I know either the withdrawal was bigger than their balance or it was less than zero. So I'm just going to prompt and um, store it in withdraw. But each of these conditions had a different error message. So that's why I'm only going to print the error message. I could put this prompt right under the if and the else if, but why duplicate it? I'm just going to save um, my lines of code. Okay, so then in the last one, once I break out, I'm going to return the balance minus the withdraw. Okay, so let's copy this over into our main function. And I'm going to just comment that out. Okay, and then we're ready to start. So the first thing we wanted to do is create a variable withdraw and assign it 0, 0. And then we'll prompt for withdraw. And we know it's going to be a float and then an input. And I'm, let me see my sample run, what I was doing. Um, enter the withdraw amount. Okay, and then while true, if the withdraw is greater than bal, remember my parameter is called bal in here. That's the variable that's holding the current balance. I passed it from main. So if it's greater than bal, I'm going to print insufficient funds. And then I'll do an else if withdraw is less than zero. I'm going to print invalid amount. Okay, else it's a good, it's good. So we're good to go. So I'm going to break out of the loop. And once I break out of the loop, then I'll return the balance and I'll subtract the um, withdraw. And let's run our program. So enter, let's uh, enter, our, we have zero dollars. And then I'm going to deposit some money, how about one to $120. And I have $120 in my account. So then let's try to withdraw an amount. Um, how about negative $9? Oh, dear. Okay, that is an infinite, infinite loop. So let's see, um, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to prompt for withdraw and store into the variable again. Okay, so it, when I got into this while true loop, that was an illegal amount. So it's just looping, 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 looping. I forgot that after we broke out, or after um, if else, we want to make sure we prompt again. Okay, that was my mistake. And that's actually a fairly common mistake students make. They forget to, within this loop, prompt again. Make sure you prompt again, okay? And let me run that again. So let's see, I'll do a deposit of $120. Let's do a withdraw of negative $9. It's an invalid amount. How about $1,000? I'm gonna to try to get away with something. Ooh, insufficient funds. And I spelled insufficient wrong, so I need to fix that. How about $100? Yay. So it takes the money, the $100, out of my account, and now I have just $20 left. Okay. And then I will hit quit. And I'm done. And that's the end of the ATM program. So you need to go through all the videos and flush your program out and then submit it um, on the discussion prompt.